Good morning. Good morning. Last week.
Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I think we are just about ready to begin. Uh, for those who didn't have a chance, don't forget to get the hymnal out at the entranceways here. Our opening prayer is going to be hymn number 777. You can play that number tonight. <laughs> 777. And we'll do verses 1 and 3. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Yes, here we are, Lord, as we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the grace, the love, the compassion, and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Amen. Thinking of those words we just heard, tending the poor and the lame, and the Lord setting a feast for them, it's a foreshadowing of the gospel that we will be listening to today. But before we get to that, now let us humble ourselves before the Lord as our first scripture passage inquires, requires of us, that in all humility we could admit that sometimes we don't say, here I am, Lord. <laughs> I'm not here to help her. I'm not here to listen to him. I'm not here to reach out to them. I'm here for myself, Lord. I'm not here for them. And so we don't respond to the call that we receive every day of our lives. So let us humble ourselves, confess in these moments of silence, and then literally be forgiven by our Lord. Let us confess.
Indeed, Lord, as our Son proclaimed, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. Thank you for saving us. And once again, we ask, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and then bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us continue now in prayer. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you then a nature in us what is good, and by your watchful air, I keep safe what you have nurtured. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. Calling all lectors, calling all lectors. <laughs> Anybody ready to dare take the challenge? <laughs> All right, we'll pray for you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, a reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, seek not. The mind of sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exalt before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to his name, whose name is the Lord. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The father of orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. God, in your goodness, you have, you have made, made a, a home, home for the poor. A bountiful rain you showered down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restored the land when it languished. Your flock settled in. In your goodness, O God, you have provided for the needy. God, God in, in your goodness, goodness you, you have, have made, made a home, home for, for the, the poor. poor. A reading from the letter of the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched in a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and storm at a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such that those heard beg that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festival, in festival gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Lord be with all of you. Now let us listen carefully to the gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke. 
glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> On the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. So he told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. So he said, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and then the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, uh, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, then he may say, Ah, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts themselves will be humbled, but the one who humbles themselves will be exalted. But then he said to the host who had invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they then might invite you back and then you'll have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For then you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, Christ really gave it to him today. Good old Pharisees. And why did he mention specifically the blind, the lame, the crippled? because those were three of many other people in different categories who were not allowed to worship at the temple because they were thought to be unclean and being punished for sin because of what their, their crippledness or their, their lameness or their being blind. And so Jesus says, those are the people that you should be inviting. So if those people weren't allowed to worship in the temple, you can be sure no Pharisee worth his position in their religion was going to invite those kind of people. They were unacceptable. But you know what? Sometimes, for some of us, on certain occasions, we find certain relatives unacceptable. They're not acceptable at our family picnic reunion, or they're not acceptable for our Christmas celebration, for whatever reason. Who do we invite? Many years ago, this particular gospel came to be real, came to be very true and honest. The parish I was in, there was a couple, Francis and Carolyn. Francis and Carolyn were the kind of people who, if you met them for the first time, you'd say, could you use some help? You know, could you use maybe some new clothes or something better? They always did their shopping at Ambets and Salvation Army. Never knew what kind of money they had. They very humbly would always be there for others. What they would do is, for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Easter, they would invite people that were not invited by others, even family members. One woman was blind. Another woman had a very difficult time walking around, so she really depended on the walker. And there too much bother for some of the, the relatives to have to put in the car and all that kind of stuff. And one particular woman, the way she dressed and acted, uh, maybe to be polite, was sort of weird. <laughs> and many people say, now you know why they don't invite her back home for the parties. But those are the people that Carolyn and Francis invited. They would even pick them up, bring them over to the house, feed them, take them home. And they knew those people were not going to be able to repay them, to thank them, but to say, but you're not just an outcast. You are somebody special. You are a human being. And Christ would want me to invite you. Very challenging, very difficult. 
when we talk about who's acceptable and not. And let's face it, even in the church, there are certain bishops who say, who's acceptable at the table of the Lord when talking about politicians or when talking about couples who are not married with the blessing of the church. They say, who's acceptable at the table of the Lord? They may say that, but Jesus would never say that. Jesus says, I want all people to know they are invited because I love all people unconditionally, no matter what they have done. The law of the Lord is a different law than the law of society. Now, how can we fit ourselves into this particular gospel? How can we make it personal for ourselves? How we can bring it alive? There are many people who are hungry. There are many people who can't afford. Let's face it, with all the prices of groceries these days going up and up and up, you know, many families, maybe especially a, 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 a single parent with a couple children or a couple that has maybe two or three children and trying to make poor mortgage payments and car payments and keeping a job and, and doing everything, and it's very difficult. But what can we do? What can we do for that elderly person who lives by herself or himself you know, and just doesn't even get out too often. How can we feed them? How can we help these individuals I just mentioned with the burdens that they carry, financially especially? Why not go to Wegmans, Tops, uh, Price Right, Aldi's, whatever, and get a gift card? Wouldn't it be great if each of us today when we left here, <laughs> or maybe during the week, stopped at some place where we could get a gift card and think about someone who's really struggling right now. Someone who really needs to be uplifted. Someone who needs to say somebody cares. Somebody who could say, wow, I don't believe it. Look what I just got in the mail today. But we do it anonymously. We don't let them know who we are. Because if we let them know, then they'll be, feel indebted to us. And so anonymously we send a gift card that may feed not just their bodies, but their heart as well. And maybe, if that can really push the, uh, the line a little bit outside the box, wouldn't it be interesting if there is a certain relative or a former friend that maybe we would invite either to our place for dinner or take them out to dinner to maybe start the process of healing, process of forgiveness, the process of Christing them, Jesus in them. Wouldn't it be wonderful, we said, now how can we make sure that certain people are taken care of and that I am responsible for that? Because I heard that gospel today. And I know that the gospel wasn't here just for me to hear. It was for me to live out. It was for me to do something about, to make it real, to make it personal. But each of us in our own particular way has to decide how to do that. Some of you may decide, how about those different agencies, um, Jericho Road, uh, even Catholic Charities Resettlement Program, uh, Jewish Services, whatever, who take care of refugees, who take care of immigrants. Yeah, they need money to help to feed these people, you know, and not just to be able to make them feel safe and secure finally in their life, but to know that they're going to eat and be alive for another day. All kind of agencies, all kind of food pantries. You know, Western New York, you know, food bank, whatever it may be, feed more buffalo. And even here, tomorrow night, five o'clock, a group of us will be gathering together in the kitchen area, putting hot meal and a cold meal together to take downtown to feed the homeless. And thank you, because a lot of you, you made those financial donations. You made it in what some would call the uh, Debbie Brown Pizza Fund. But it's just a term that's used to provide money to be able to give this opportunity to the homeless in downtown Buffalo. We have to be able to say, I know we can all do something. And there's not one person here, including myself, who is so bad off that we can't afford to do something. You know, we may have our own problems, our own needs, our own challenges, but there's not one person who can say that I can't do something for someone. 
And so as we come to the Lord today, we ask the Lord to lead us and to guide us and to make sure that indeed, we're not just sitting there listening, I'm not just sitting here talking, spouting off a lot of things, but that we're gonna do something about it. Then this gospel, whether at home, here, or elsewhere the rest of the coming week, will say, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for speaking to my heart, to my conscience, to my faith, amen. And now let us stand in prayer. For all of our church leaders, that fervent prayer remains the foundation for all that they do, we pray to the Lord. That with God's help, we will eliminate the growing violence in our neighborhoods and cities, we pray to the Lord. For all those looking for direction in their lives, that they may receive clear guidance through persistent prayer and honest hearts, we pray to the Lord. And as we begin a new semester and, and welcome many students who are here today joining us, and we welcome you, we pray for the skills and wisdom that you will need to continue to be able to grow, not just academically, but personally, and that you will always find a home here at the UB Newman community. We pray to the Lord. For the deceased, for Helen Singe, who was buried this week, for Lisa Latona, whose funeral was this weekend, Maureen O'Connell, whose funeral is tomorrow, for John Lynch, who passed away this week, and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Also for those who are sick, for Joe Stravalacci, who is declining, and for comfort for him and his family, for Pat Julian, who had serious surgery this week for her recovery, for Father Al Osiander, who is in the hospital, for continued prayers for Christina Bidney, and especially those listed in the church bulletin for their caregivers, and also for Doris Russo, who is seriously ill, we pray to the Lord. And any other prayers that some of you may have brought with you, please let us know, and then we can make it our prayer as well. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Lord, hear our prayer. And also, of course, for the professors who will face the challenges of, you know, new students that they are responsible for and are to inspire to make sure each student comes to his or her potential, we pray to the Lord. And so, Lord God, we thank you, not just for listening to these prayers today, but also the prayers that we bring to you every day, knowing, Lord, that you will listen to us as surely as we have now listened to you, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer. 
taken from the fields and the work of human hands, it will become for all of us the very bread of life. Lord, as surely as we unite this wine along with this water in a way that they cannot be separated from each other again, we pray, Lord, that we will so be united with you as to never be separated from you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for all of us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. And so now let us pray and truly ask that what we do give to the Lord in bread, in wine, our donations, our very lives, everything we give will be found acceptable. May the Lord accept. Lord, may this sacred offering confer on us always the blessing of salvation that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere under all circumstances to give you praise and thanks, most loving God. For by the word of your son's gospel that we have just heard, you have brought together a church that combines people of every race, every tongue, every nation. You have filled her with life by the power of your spirit, and you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. So manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessing hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord, you promise would last forever. And that is why we join together now with one another here, with those at home and throughout the world, but also with the angels and saints as we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the source, the font of all holiness. Therefore make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a refreshing dewfall, so that they may become for us the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed by a friend, he entered willingly into his passion. He took some bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And then in a similar manner, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, again, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And so we proclaim that wonderful mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we do celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation. And we thank you for counting each and every one of us worthy to be here with you this morning and to minister to you. Humbly we do pray that in partaking of the very body and blood of Christ, well then we will be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your people throughout the whole world. 
We ask that you would continue to help Francis, our Pope, Mike, our Bishop, the women and the men who are leaders of all religions, all churches and denominations. May they continue to be your instruments of justice, of peace, love and harmony in a world you have created for everyone. We ask, Lord, that you would remember in a special way our relatives, our friends, those who through death have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died touched by your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. And Lord, remember in a very special way today, Steve Kovac and Tony Downey. But Lord, we also ask that you would have mercy on us, so that along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her spouse, Joseph, with the apostles, with all the saints who, yes, have pleased you throughout the ages, that we in this day and age may lead lives pleasing to you, and then may merit to be co-heirs with those saints, and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus the Christ. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. And so now as we pray to our Father, remember that everybody else considers God to be their Father, their Creator as well. So with them, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our day so that we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we do await the blessed hope and the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your followers, peace I leave you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives temporarily, but as only I can give for all eternity. We ask, Lord, that you would not concentrate so much on our sin, but more importantly upon our faith, so we could share peace and unity here today with one another, with others when we leave here today, and then with you one day in heaven forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord's peace, may his joy be with all of you. And now let us share those blessings, those gifts with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are all of us, all of us, now called to join in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And as we prepare to come in union with our Lord in this sacrament, we pray with those at home. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never, never permit me to be separated from you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. For our community, um, as Father Roy mentioned, the Sandwich Ministry is meeting tomorrow, the 29th, at 5 p.m. Um, there are some items that they still need. Those are listed in our newsletter. 
This Tuesday from 4 to 8 p.m., the men's club is going to be hosting a picnic in the parking lot. Uh, they're providing hot dogs and hamburgers. They ask if you come to bring either a side dish or dessert to share and also to bring chairs so you have somewhere to sit. Um, all men's club members and also friends of our Newman community here are invited. That includes you, any of our new students. Um, there is a flyer at the side door and also in the back with the information um, if you need to talk to anybody about it or if you just need a reminder. Next Sunday, that's right, the 4th of September, we'll have our first children's mass. So Katie, our youth minister over there, is going to have our faith formation uh, kids help out with the mass. They'll be doing uh, the offertory, they're gonna help set the altar. So if you have any students in faith formation, or if you'd like to come to a mass that's for our kids to meet some of the younger members of our community, next Sunday it is at 10.30. So the 10.30 mass is for the children's. On the 29th, which is tomorrow from 10 to 5 p.m. in the student union, there's gonna be a blood drive benefiting the Red Cross. Um, there are flyers with information, again, at the side doors and in the back, if you would like to sign up for an appointment. Again, that's tomorrow from 10 to 5. Lastly, for our community, on the 30th of September, we will be jointly hosting with St. Joe's the Sip, Savor, and Celebrate event. This is a wine tasting event, the proceeds of which will benefit both of our campus ministries. You may have noticed that there were things at the end of your rows that looked like little postcards. On those little postcards, there's information for the event. There is also a QR code on the back of them. That QR code is how you get tickets for the event. They're $50 for one ticket, $75 for two tickets. They are being sold to both our communities on a first come, first serve basis. <clears throat> so if you'd like to go, you should probably get a ticket sometime soon. Lastly, for all of our students, first of all, on behalf of Father Pat, who's in the back, Father Roy, who's right here, um, myself, the pastoral associate, that's me, and then my wife, who's the campus minister here, uh, welcome to the UB Newman Center. We're very excited that you guys are here um, in our community. We're very excited that you're starting on campus. So a couple of things for you, our new students, and also for any of our returning students. Good to see you guys again. Uh, first, next Sunday, before our student mass, which is at 6.30 in the evening, we're gonna have a welcome back barbecue for you guys. All so right. from four to six, there's also going to be food available. We'll be right outside the main doors here. Um, just come, get food, and then if you wanna join us, we have that 6.30 mass every Sunday. We're starting it tonight. Um, it's specifically for our students. If you don't feel like getting up in the morning, well, we have that later mass <laughs> for you. A Couple other things for students. Um, we are going to announce at our student masses the events that we have for this semester. We have a women's group that meets bi-weekly. Um, we have our Wednesday night dinners, which will be starting at the end of September. Another night of free food for you guys. And then we'll have a couple other things during the semester. We're gonna be planning a retreat. We're gonna have a Bible study. So you're invited to any or all of those events. And then lastly, for our student mass, we have a bus to pick you up on campus. Uh, the schedule, I think, is in the newsletter. Um, we yeah. have pickups at Griner Hall, Governors, Hadley, South Lake, and then also at the traffic uh, loop outside of the CCC. So if you'd like to come to the student mass, but in the middle of winter, don't wanna walk through a foot of snow, we have the bus, it runs all year round. We'd be happy to pick you up, and we hope to see you guys throughout the year. Thank you. And as we prepare to end this time of prayer, if you would turn to hymn number 829, that will be our final prayer. 829. And let us stand. Lord, renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to help those who are in need of food, physically or spiritually, so we can serve them as you have called us to serve. This we ask through Jesus, who lives forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with all of you.
May God bless us and many through us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Now let us be ready to go in the peace and the joy of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God our Creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. <laughs> Have a great day.